LinkedIn is the ultimate social media Rolodex. You can use LinkedIn to reach out and work with your first level connections, that is people who've already agreed to be connected with you, but you can also use your first level connections to reach out to your second level connections, that is the first level connections of your first level connections who are your second level connections. So in this video, let's go over how to schmooze on LinkedIn with both your first levels and your second level connections. Let's get started. First up, let's talk about working with your first level connections. These are people who have accepted a connection request from you. So they're like friends on Facebook. So I'm going to go over to my LinkedIn and just sort of conceptually, sort of just a simple way to understand it is let's say that I need a WordPress de developer, WordPress designer. So I can type in WordPress and hit search. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. So I can type in WordPress and hit search, and then I can click on people. Anyone who is a first level connection, I can see their email, I can send them a message. So notice here how this person is identified as a first level connection, and this person is identified as a second level connection. And notice over here how it says message versus connect. So what it's trying to tell me is if I click through to April here. Now I'm not going to do this, but I could show you, I can look and I can see her email, her phone, etc. Or I can just send her a message and that will message her through LinkedIn or it will send her an email. Do usually do both. Uh, now that's different than somebody who's a second level connection. So here's a person I'm second level connected to and I could request a connection, which is sort of like, Hey Stacy, connect to me, although I don't know her. Uh, or over here, I can see a little bit. Sometimes you can see their Twitter over here. So the point is, there's a big distinction between your first level connections that you can search for based on keywords, you can send messages to, you can do all sorts of cool things with um, in terms of uh, using LinkedIn as a rel Rolodex, and your second or even third level connections where you're more, it's more difficult. So that's your first concept, is that you want to have a lot of firsts so that you can work with them. Now, let's go over what happens with a first level connection. So we've already talked about this first issue here, that your first level connections, you can see their email and phone number and you can send them a message. So they, these are all kind of interconnected, uh, using it kind of like a social Rolodex. But related to that is if I'm connected to a person or vice versa, when I post to my timeline, then that will show in their newsfeed and vice versa. You know, all kind of dependent, you know, are they checking LinkedIn, a little bit of the LinkedIn algorithm, etc. So what that means is if I pop back over to LinkedIn and I click on home, so when I'm on LinkedIn on my phone or on my desktop or whatever, I'm going to see people like this uh, Samara person, right? And see how it says first right? So I'm connected to her. And as she's posting to her timeline, it's showing in my news feed, right? So generally speaking, the, the news feed is going to be full of your first level connections, what's going on and that in and turn that around, I can post a message and say, you know, um, you know, you know, hey, gang, I'm going to go to proteomics world in Boston, and we're going to have a wine and cheese party. And anyone who wants to come to our corporate launch is invited, you know, come get uh, wonderful wine and cheese at the show. So I can use LinkedIn to sort of notify and talk to my first level connections. That's the main uh, driver of it. And uh, you know, the long and short of it here is you want to grow your first level connections as much as possible. You want to constantly be connecting on LinkedIn to grow your network. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about your second level connection. So these are the connections of your connections. So your first level connections, first level connections that you don't connect to are your second level. So I'm connected to Bob, Bob connected to Mary, therefore Mary is my second level connection. Now here you can go and again, let's use this example of WordPress. I can type in WordPress and I, let's say I'm going to go to some WordPress show or something. I can click people. I can filter by second levels. So now these are all people I'm second level to. And then I can click through. So here's Amanda Powell. And you can see if you scroll down, it's going to tell you that I'm connected to her through 
people such and such. Okay, so then I can reach out to my first level connections and ask them to introduce me to her. Okay, now here's where it gets a little funky. You can't do this on the desktop version of LinkedIn anymore. Don't ask me why, but it doesn't work on the desktop. It only works on the mobile phone or the app version. So it's better to do this search on your phone and then reach out via your phone. And then I can say, hey, Mark, I would like you to introduce me to Amanda uh, because I'm going to be in Boston at WordPress World and we're going to have a trade show and we're going to have a launch. And she's in, you know, she's going to be in Boston or looks like she's from Detroit. Uh, and then we're going to have this reason to connect. So I can essentially, you know, use to be a little bit kind of crude about it. I can use Mark to reach out to Amanda and start a connection. So that's that's this second level connection. Now I can also just be bold and within reason, I can click connect here and then I can write a message and say, hey, I see that you're a person that's in WordPress, you're gonna be in Boston, I'd like to meet with you. Now again, very much within reason, if you over spam, you'll get into trouble there. I would not recommend doing that. So you have one option, which is to try to connect with them very much within reason, not a lot, uh, very professional. It's okay to do it that way. Uh, better is to use a first level connection to ask for an introduction. And then the third thing you can do is you can use LinkedIn to find them and then use Twitter to connect, connect with them directly. So for instance, if I go to this search you know, for WordPress, I look at seconds and here's this guy, Bill. I can click on Bill and I'm a second level, so I'm not, I can't even see his email or contact him. But if I click over here to show more over here on the right, look at what pops up. So I can see here's his Twitter. So then I can use Twitter to reach out to him and I can say, hey, Bill, I found you on LinkedIn, but I'd like to offer you a job, get, you know, some reason. And I see that you're a WordPress expert, blah, blah, blah. So you can use LinkedIn, it's kind of better than Twitter to find people and then use Twitter to talk to them. So it's a pretty neat um, kind of combo, LinkedIn and Twitter working together. Okay, so step three, just sort of to reiterate and really emphasize this, you, your team, everyone who's working in your company, you wanna constantly be growing your LinkedIn connection. So how do you do this? Every time you go to a trade show, you come back to your office, stack of business cards, you wanna hunt those people down uh, through LinkedIn. You've got their email, you've got their phone number, you've got a reason to look them up on LinkedIn. You can find them, click on the connect button and say, hey, we just met at you know, Nerd World Boston and I'd like to connect to you uh, through LinkedIn. So you take that one-time connection in the real world and you make it a virtual connection on LinkedIn and then six months down the road, nine months down the road, you can talk to that person through LinkedIn. So you're constantly gonna be growing your real world connections uh, into LinkedIn so your LinkedIn network is bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, that's also gonna extend the reach of your newsfeed uh, into those people that are checking LinkedIn. So that's a very important point. Finally, let's talk a little bit about giving and getting recommendations and endorsements. And what are we talking about here? So if we're on LinkedIn, and we can use my profile as an example, and if I go into my profile, you'll see that there are endorsements and recommendations. So I'm gonna scroll down here. Okay, so you can see here that I have been endorsed for SEO by over 99 people, social media over 99 people. So all these different people have endorsed me. Yes, I'm smart, I understand these skills. So you're gonna constantly be giving and getting endorsements and that's gonna, it's kinda like little mini merit badges. That's gonna make you uh, look um, cool and important and smart and you want to get you and your team to do that and the best way to do this is to go endorse other people that you've worked with a recommendation is a little bit beefier right so this is a person that took my class at Stanford and he's written a recommendation for me and then I can put that on my profile as um, you know kind of a 
kind of like a letter of recommendation that you'd have or something like that. So the same idea. Now, you know, to be honest, to be cynical, people know that endorsements and recommendations are very much very positive or you scratch my back or I scratch your back or whatever. You know, so they're it's good to have them. They're not bad. They make you look cooler. But I wouldn't overemphasize their importance. I think it's important to get some of them and to constantly be looking for them. But they're only as so far as good as they are because people know that they're kind of nicey nice. Uh, so I finally have the links to the pages on LinkedIn help about that as well. And the wrap up here on this recommendation is, you know, just be preemptive. It's very schmoozy. It's very much about, you know, constantly growing your network, interacting with your network and, you know, uh, talking to your network, endorsing, recommending, and just sort of growing that network. So then when it's crunch time and you've got a trade show, you've got a new book, you're looking for a job, you've got this big network that you can reach out to uh, and talk to through LinkedIn. And that, uh, my friends, is the purpose of schmoozing on LinkedIn.